Welcome back to the Creative War Podcast. It's been a while since I've been able to actually sit down and post and edit and actually do a podcast. I have some things in the pipeline that has just not been uploaded and posted yet, but I'm happy and excited to get back to it in terms of posting and doing interviews and stuff like that. Um, one of the things I underestimated when I decided to take on doing a podcast was how much time it would take to actually do. But again, I'm excited to be back on the grind. Um, time is freeing up just a little bit. Um, have some things coming up that I'm excited about that's going to help me uh, be more available and have more space and time to create some things and work on things. So I'm excited about that. With that being said, uh, today we have a very special guest. We got my brother, my big bro, John Mike on today. Um, John Mike is the creator of Gospel Producers as well as an entrepreneur in his own right. Um, he's done a lot of amazing things through the years. Uh, for the gospel community and he's really building up gospel producers and we have him on for an interview today and we're just going to be talking about his story um, i'm asking him a lot of great questions and he's just sharing his knowledge and his wisdom so i'm super grateful that i was able to get him on so the interview you're about to hear or see depending on how you're consuming this is an impromptu to the conversation that we was having um, before actually turning on the camera. So this interview is about an hour long. We go over a lot of good topics and John Mike again shares a lot of wisdom and a lot of how he started gospel producers, how he got to the spot in the space that he's in now. So we're gonna jump right into the interview. I hope you guys enjoy this interview. I definitely had a lot of fun. Let's do it. So today we have a very special guest. We got my brother, John Mike in the building. Everyone clap it up for John Mike in the building. How you doing today, my brother? I'm good, man. How you feeling, bro? I appreciate I'm doing you. Good. Absolutely. Yes, sir. So this came about, we've been talking for the past couple of months here and there, and I'm like, yo, I gotta get you on the podcast. We gotta talk mm -hmm. about this in front of the people. I feel like we've been having so many great conversations. I've been learning a lot from you, and I'm like, yeah. we here now. So we get to so. talk about all the stuff we've been going over. So question number one. Okay. First, introduce yourself. How did, uh, who is John Mike? I, I kind of hate that question, but who is John Mike? Introduce well, yourself. Man, I would say if I had to, I just quick thing. I am a piano teacher from Jackson, Tennessee. Yeah. That's yep. in a nutshell who I am. That's been just blessed to, um, uh, to just do some, just do some stuff. I just, yeah. <laughs> that's just what I do. I just do stuff, but stuff in the music realm. So, you know, I've done uh, YouTube, everything from being a YouTuber to, yeah. uh, of course, I taught piano lessons for, I ran a school of music for like 15 years, mm. uh, church musician. Um, I've ran a tracks based business. I've done online master classes. Um, all of those things like that. And at current, uh, at least these last few years of my life, I've been delving into software development and yes. um, doing, you know, plugins and all of those different things like that. So it's been a pretty cool, been a pretty cool journey. Gotcha. So the question I want to get into is for those of you that are wondering, you are the owner and the founder of Gospel Producers, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Gospelproducers.com. I, that's what I, I forgot to mention in the midst of, even though I got this big right, sign right. behind Amazing me. Amazing sign, by Gospel. the way. Thank you, man. Um, yeah. So how did Gospel Producers come about? As we know, I feel like in the gospel space, there isn't a lot of... Um, I want, There's a community in gospel music, but I feel yeah. like in the entrepreneurship space, there's not a lot that we can really pull from. You know, we got... Um, gospel musicians, got yeah. gospel producers, we got C dub loops. Yeah. These these are people that's, you know, killing the game. But how did you decide to create a space um like gospelproducers.com? Yeah. Um, I'd say that it came about really by accident. So of course I am a I'm a serial entrepreneur. What does that mean? So, Explain that. Almost like a serial killer, you know, a serial killer is almost like, you know, killing people left and right, you know, uh -huh. just, just racking up body count, you know, killing folks. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I did the same thing on the business side, just doing <laughs> stuff. Serial entrepreneur, just I, I would wake up one morning and just be like, oh, start a business. 
Oh, I got an idea. Let wow. me get another LLC. Oh, I got an idea. Let me get a new EIN number. Uh, like one of you was talking about gospel musicians, uh, Jamal Hartwell. He he messed with me when I um, went out in my early years of of business when I first started building a relationship with him, mm-hmm. and he was like. Dude, like, cause I would, he would email me something, and then I would email him back, and he'd be like, "Who is this?" And I'm like, "It's me, John Mike." And he'd be like, "Dude, how many emails do you have?" <laughs> and I'll be like, "Oh, bro, my bad. I got an email for like every business that I have, like legit, like I have an wow. email, and I just forget like which one I'm replying from." So mm-hmm. I, I just would do stuff in those early years, cause I've been doing business for 20 years. You know, like since I was like 19, 20, that's all I've been doing. So I built a school of music. Uh, like I said, did that for like over a dozen years. And then I went from there. And uh, as I got started transitioning into the online space, yeah. started my YouTube channel, started scaling mm-hmm. that, building that, and then um, moved into starting a business uh, called Gospel Multitracks yeah. uh, dot com, where we did stems and we did um, multi tracks and all of those things like that, and then we were eventually acquired by LoopCommunity.com, mm. and we built that out over several years into uh, now what is called Loop Gospel, uh, and then Loop Community eventually just completely acquired that company, and then we transitioned, or well, I transitioned out uh, other partners and all of that. They went on what they did because I started that with a couple of guys. And then I stayed on to kind of continue running that brand for uh, a few years. And then I started branching out and doing my own thing. Uh, So gospel producers came about because in the midst of all of that, just in and out transition, doing stuff, Mm -hmm. um, I somebody had hit us because we were building, we were doing stem tracks and people just loved the way we were doing stuff with gospel multi tracks. Yeah. Like nobody was doing stems for yes. the gospel community at that point. And nobody yep. was yep. doing, uh, and not, it's definitely not at the level in which we were doing in the quality at which we were doing them because we were going to the studio and we would record, like we're going to like big box studios and just record like on SSL boards and mm. big, you know, all of that stuff like that, just getting the, the most, the best quality possible. Yeah. And so people started to ask, well, how are you guys doing this? How are you guys getting that quality? How are you guys doing that, doing the, getting that quality and doing that? And, or, and so I began, as my mind, I started thinking like, you know, there's a segment in market because I'm always looking at how can I can, how can I always either level up what I'm always already doing or how can, what is the next logical thing to do with this thing that I'm doing? Yeah. And the teacher in me, is just that that's just the, that's just who I am. That's where I got my start. So the mm-hmm. teacher in me is like, how do I teach it? Like, because I feel like I'm leaving out a segment of the market. There's a segment of the market of musicians and churches that buy our tracks, mm-hmm. but there's also a segment of the market of musicians that create their own tracks. You know, yeah. and so they would tell me. I go out to conferences in different places. I run into musicians. They'd be like, "Oh man, yeah, I really love what you're doing, man. It's really dope. I don't buy the tracks, but I create them." And they're like, "Oh man, send me some of the stuff that you create." And they send me the stuff, and I'm like, "This sounds like trash." Oh man, like, what is this? Like, <laughs> and they would be bragging about it, like, "Oh yeah, yeah man, yeah, I do my own stuff." And I'm like, "Bro, you should just buy the tracks from us. Mm. Your tracks don't don't sound good. They're not slapping. But, <laughs> they're not slapping. <laughs> but in their mind, they think they were just like." Yeah. It was the the bee's knees. And I'm like, nah, the bees ain't got no knees, bro. Like, that don't <laughs> sound good. Um, so I surmised in my brain, okay, so I got a group of people that don't buy tracks from us, but they're inter- but they create their own. And most of these people that are creating their own tracks don't really know what they're doing. So how do I how do I teach them how to create better tracks? And I'm like, hmm. That's another business because it doesn't really make sense in the line of the business that I'm already doing. Right. right because right. here we got, you know, uh, we got like um, uh, musicians and all of those people that are uh, building their own tracks and stuff like that. So they're not really interested in buying. And then we got people that are buying tracks that aren't interested in learning how to build. So it's like, all right, I got to create another website. Yeah. So I created another website. It's probably 2016, 2017. It's called creatingstems.com. Oh, okay. Yeah, most people don't know about that because that was the launching pad for gospel producers because that's yeah. where I got to really 
experiment and see what I did. So we started doing master classes on wow. um uh started doing master classes on like how to record stems, how to create stems. Mm -hmm. And so I would pull all of the homies from like gospel multi-tracks like Brian Williams and Marcus Murray and all of the ones that were really doing their thing. And then I would do classes. We do live classes. Jan did a Jan Hunter did a class for us way back in like 2016. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, we would just do classes on how to create. We would do live classes too. And so mm -hmm. I even back then I was before people got into that whole vibe, I was doing that back then. I would create a we would go live in a private group on Facebook. We would yeah. sell basically Fire. like tickets. We sell tickets basically. And we would get like maybe a hundred, two hundred people that would come in and be like, "Oh, that's yo, a lot." Like, yeah, yeah. And it didn't seem well. We we'd be trying to figure out, well, how do we get five hundred for the next one? You know, yeah. <laughs> we would try to, you know, build that out. You know, and and we would go live in a private group mm -hmm. on Facebook, and we would to like two hours, two or three hours, and we would teach these people how to record stems like it just basically be it the funny thing the hack of it all is we would be creating tracks that we were gonna sell on uh gospel multi tracks anyway yeah. so it was like come pay us to watch us go make more money <laughs> yes yes pay us to come watch us create something that's going to make us some more money uh residually and so then i was able to take that those classes that we would record in private groups and then we would edit them down into master classes and then i would put them up on creating stems and then we would resell the live classes that we uh, wow. that we were doing. And so we did that for a space of a couple of years. And it was nice little, nice little side hustle that kind of grew in tandem with what I, on the side of what I was doing with, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with gospel multi-tracks and loop community. Uh, and then, um, um, at some point I want to say, I think it was, we were doing something with Jan. Yeah. And Jan, it went live on his page on, um, Facebook, he went on Facebook Live. He was doing a live, just letting people know, hey, you still got time to get in on this live class that I'm about okay. to do in this private I think I vaguely remember these days, vaguely. And so he was doing that. So in the middle of that live, out of nowhere, John Yash, mixing engineer, got like the GOAT gospel mixing engineer. If you don't wow. know who John Yash is, John Yash pops in on that live. I don't know because I shared it on my page. I don't know who he was following. I don't know if he was mm. following Jan or if he was following me before or if he was following both of us. But some kind of way he ran up on that live mm -hmm. out of nowhere. And he was just like, you know, he was in the comments and we didn't know he was in there. And he, I guess he was I don't know how long he was listening. And all of a sudden he was like, we just saw this is really cool. And we was like, is that Yash? We kept, you know, we was just looking like, yo, yo. And then like Jan acknowledged him and stuff like that. And he was like, yo, this is really, really cool. Really, really cool. And then I was like, yo, man, honored to, you know, that you stopped yeah. by, blah, blah, blah. You know, we we fanning out at that point. And so we was, and so I, I don't know, man, I just shot my shot. And I was just like, yo, he, cause he was like, this is really, really cool, man. This is really, really cool. And I was like, man, we would love to do something with you. You know, you do a class on mixing or something. And then yeah. he was like, I would love to do that. I would just love to do that. And so <laughs> hey. he, he shot his email, you know, and everything got his email. So I reached out like probably like that next day, mm -hmm. uh, sent him an email. And we started talking about the premise of him doing a master class on uh, mixing. Yeah. And so then I was presented with another conundrum, the conundrum of, OK, I have this website called Creating Stems where we yep. teach people how to create, teach gospel church musicians how to create stems for Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And I just got a deal with the biggest gospel mixing engineer in the world of all yeah. time. Yeah. And. Yet again, I ask myself in my mind, I surmise in my mind when I'm looking at, you know, the business structures that I got, this doesn't fit here. No difference than creating stems fit with gospel multi-tracks, you know? Yeah. Like, it doesn't fit, like, it doesn't make sense to do it over here on a website called Creating Stems. So I'm like, 
what am I going to do with this? This 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 is I can't pass this opportunity up. I can't let this go. I can't let this fly. I got to figure it out. But it doesn't make sense to do here. And it definitely doesn't make sense to put on loop community and all that stuff. So I was like, <laughs> all right. I just started typing in. Let me see. Gospelproducers.com. Does anybody use that? Nobody's using that domain. I bought that domain and I said, all right, I'm going to just, I'm thinking it's maybe going to be a one-off. I'm like, yeah, you know, and maybe I'll come back and do some other stuff, but for, or at least for this thing, I need to do it over here because it doesn't make sense to do it over here. So we'll yeah. just do it over here. and We'll make this money on the gospel side, you know, with producers, cause this is a bigger market, you know, and right. we just did the class over there and it just exploded, of course. And was that, that was the. So that was, was the start that, of gospel producers. So that was that. So, sorry to cut you off. Was that like no, the good. first uh, gospel producers product? I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. That was the very first thing. And you said you don't got to say numbers, but you said that product went crazy. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, boom. it did. It it did. It was it was really good. It was it was enough to make me, you know, they what's that what's that scripture where they say like a man finds a treasure in a field and uh -huh. you know buries it and goes and sells all he has and uh -huh. goes back and buys the field. Well, I went and bought the field like after that because wow. it was just it was really good. I mean, now it it it, it wasn't I'm not going to say that it was earth-shattering like yeah. oh my god, like we made a billion dollars because we Yeah. nowhere near not not even close. We, you know, but it was a nice nice enough number that showed me the potential yes of what it could be and so around that time uh was when masterclass was really taking off yes that website yes. Ma masterclass i'm so and so and this is my masterclass yes you know that was the thing then right you know it was just like you know masterclass was just it you know what I mean? Like everybody was doing a master class. And yeah. so I started thinking like, yo, we could build the gospel master class. Right. Yep. And so um, and the crazy thing is I never did anything at that scale. Like I've been basically practicing with creating stems. But we was using OBS and screen sharing and we were just using our built in cameras on our on our um MacBooks and all of that stuff like that, lo real low quality stuff. Like I go back and look at that stuff now and just laugh. Yeah. Um, but it, I had never did anything at that level and quality. And so, I mean, I've been doing YouTube videos and I've been doing all of those things like that. So it's like it was like skill stacking, you know, up up mm. to that point. So I just started putting all of the logical things together that I've been doing over the years. Um, and like, okay, I need more cameras. So I went and bought some more DSLR. I had one little Canon T2i. That's all right, I had. Okay. So I went and found like two other T2i's, two three eyes, with T three eyes, wherever they was. Mm -hmm. Got some more lenses and and we went down to Nashville and we spent like two or three days down there just shooting. You know, just and I still didn't know what I was doing. That was the first time shooting anything at that scale. I made Whoa. so many mistakes with that. It came out really, really good, but I made. Like I didn't know anything about audio sync and video audio video Bro. sync really at that level because we didn't have you know we didn't have ATEM switchers and yeah all of that stuff we didn't have access to none of that stuff. I just had like three or four like Canon cameras. I had a Zoom audio recorder um, that I plugged into. I ran a. Uh, uh, out of a headphone jack they had in the control room, I ran out of the headphone jack into the Zoom recorder mm. so I can capture the audio coming straight off the board uh, as they were recording, which actually, you know, came out really, really good. Worked the out. Zoom, like, it locked us in. Like, it was really, really good audio. Um, um, but the thing is, I didn't know anything about syncing. I didn't think anything about the syncing aspect of all of this audio in post. And mm. so I remember that first day, like, well, really and collectively across three days of recording, I had about at least 25, 26 hours worth of footage. Wow. That was not, that was random. Like I'm telling them, we didn't even keep the cameras rolling. And it was, this was on like 12 or 11 SD cards. Cause I didn't know what I was doing. So we just had like, wow. I had SD cards everywhere, footage everywhere. 
audio on this little Zoom recorder. And of course, my dumb butt just starting and stopping, starting and stopping, starting and yeah. stopping. Every time something interesting happened, I start the cameras, stop the cameras, start the cameras, stop the cameras. And so I'm thinking like, oh, yeah, I think I know what I'm doing. I think we can figure it out. We get, oh, in the even the screen record. So we recorded the screen mm-hmm. of the DAW. They were using Pro Tools in the control room. We recorded the screen. And so I'm thinking like, oh, that's cool. We get the screen recording. And QuickTime has this little thing where it you know, records the audio from the built-in mm-hmm. mic. I'm thinking it's doing that. I get home, look up, pull up the file. I have the screen recording. There's no reference audio on the screen recording at all like there's none what so how there's did y'all think zo- it so it was just was a lot of post-production work and but i put i put probably about five or six months into that class like i'm talking wow. like daily just sitting down like i had like with the screen like the screen uh recording of that class i literally had to eyeball it like i had to eyeball every frame of that like even 10 the hour, stopping and going and the stopping. all the stopping because we left that was the Bro. only thing that kept running the entire session the only thing that kept running the entire session was the screen recording that sounds like pain oh never do it again never that, do it again i i and, love you i love that you shared that though one of the uh, thoughts that comes to mind a lot um i think oftentimes people see what you do or they see what myself is you know trying to build up and they're like mm-hmm. Oh, they can do that because they know what they're doing. And Mm-mm. oftentimes when you're just starting out, it's like you have to just be willing to start. It's not that you yep. have all the answers or you have all the gear you need. Sometimes it's just, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm just doing it. And I feel like yeah. as we take the approach to go towards what we're called to do, God will start giving answers and give exactly. you the supernatural strength to edit. 24 26 hours or so you still got to do the work still got to yeah, show up you got to do the work i still got to show it up but terrible. i feel like wisdom will come along the way you know it did and so i was able to take what i learned from that all of the mistakes and when i did the next class we did was with aaron lewis and mm. so when i did the class with aaron i knew what not to do and i yeah. knew yeah. what to, i knew i had by that point i'm like all right, what me- what mistakes did I make over here that we can do not repeat over here? Yeah. So when I get back home, I'm not making a mistake. And so I remember that week was crazy because when I did the Aaron class, because we I flew into Nashville, recorded with Aaron for like two days, and then the Stellars was going on uh that same week and i had mm-hmm. to be out for the stellar so i flew out of nashville to the stellars for mm-hmm. that weekend and i would remember getting to the hotel and i was looking over the footage and stuff that i had shot with aaron and starting to kind of put it together in my mind and see what i want to do and so as i was looking i was like this is not, I'm, I'm missing some gaps mm-hmm. like there's some things that i didn't get that i wish i, I would have got is the process and i was like this is not this is dope but this is aaron too and this is part two of what i'm coming off of a high with yash i need a home run so i remember assessing that footage and looking at it and saying like this this just ain't it and i was i was i was so i was so afraid i remember being afraid to like ask aaron like if we could do some reshoots because I'm like, man, because oh, wow. I'm thinking like one take Jake, like I don't want to just be that guy. Yeah. And I went back and forth, but I, I thought on that that whole weekend. And finally, I just said, you know what? That Sunday I had, because I was flying back into Nashville that Monday to fly back to Charlotte that evening. So it was just crazy week. So I was just like, I just shot my, I was just like, you know what? Punch fear in the face, whatever they say, you know, just do yeah. it. Like, what am I scared for? Like, all he can say is yes or no, and maybe I got to come back, you know, a few weeks from now, a few months from now, and we'll just take our time. So I just said, hey, bro, like, do you have, like, two hours tomorrow? Like, legit, I'm in and out. I need to shoot, like, like I need to fill in some gaps on a couple of things. Like, and I shot him with the things that I needed to fill in. He was like, oh, well, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be at the church. Just, just come on in. I was like, okay, yeah. bet. So I got got in out of the the thing, literally shot straight over to his church where he records at, and we just literally shot like another two or three hours worth of footage to fill in the gaps that I needed. So then when I got back, I felt confident in what we had created at that point and knew that I could push into building out his course 
Uh, and then it went on to just, you know, basically double even what we did with Yash and still selling even to this day. We still yeah. get still get people that are buying Aaron's class. Bro, I love the transparency. Like, I think oftentimes I see I see what you guys are doing and like it's like, oh, you know, gospel producers, they got it figured out. But Heck when no. I hear that, you know, when you took on the journey to start, you know, reaching out to Yash and Aaron, it's kind of like, all right, I got an idea how to do this, but I don't quite know how to do this. You know, yeah. it's like you got to just got an idea. You're just taking a leap of faith. Yeah. And it's like, oh, man, I messed up. And it's like, yeah. oh, you guys kind of you kind of mess up along the way and you learn, you know? Oh, bro, we make so many mistakes. I've made so many mistakes over the course of like I said, 20 years in business. But one thing I learned is that you just have to just, you just gotta, I know it sounds so cliche, but it you does. just gotta, you just gotta jump in and do it and figure it out. And you, and that is something to be said about the confidence of, you have to, you have to know enough about something <laughs> yeah. to be confident enough to try something that you've never tried and to convince other people to come along the journey with you. Mm -hmm. That's the story <laughs> of my life, the story of my business. Yeah. It's literally like I, I can cross reference every inflection point from starting my YouTube channel to even the YouTube channel. When I started the YouTube channel, it was because I was seeing people uh, I was I was seeing people like talk about like main stage and Ableton and all of this mm -hmm. stuff back in the day. And and they were trying to figure out how to get it to work in church. And I was using it in church oh, wow. like on Sunday, Sunday basis, running click tracks, running stems, doing all those things. And like I was just like, yo, and so many people were asking me questions. So I was just like, man, I should start a YouTube channel. Man, I should just put this stuff on YouTube because and it was really because people were asking me so many questions that it i kept answering the same questions over and over and over again yeah. i said i'll just do a video and then i could just send them this video i was not trying to be a youtuber i was just trying to like get people out of my DMs. value Provi like, providing like just here value. you know and then it started snowballing into to that but even you know gospel multi tracks the same thing i'm i'm a piano teacher at that like what I have no Grammys, no nothing. I I would I had never done production or anything at that level or at that mm -hmm. scale. You know what I'm saying? Like I had never done stems at that level. Like never it, I, I I was running a local studio, but it was yeah. like your basic it was like a, a commercial bedroom studio, basically. Yeah. Like it was not it was not like big box enough to be calling myself an actual like real studio studio. Mm -hmm. I just had a commercial spot and I had a, you know, some, a few pieces of gear that I could do some recording stuff. Uh, but I was not recording bands and recording, you know, all of that stuff. So all of that stuff was a journey. It was literally a journey of learning that stuff on the go. Like, it's just like, I don't know where that came from just within my heart. I've just never been that dude that just lets, the lack of experience or the lack of knowledge on something stopped me from yeah. pushing into the dream. You know what I'm saying? Because we'll 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 let those two things converge on each other and it creates fear. Because I have lack of experience and lack of knowledge. Therefore, I am afraid to jo jump into this thing because what if I fail? And then I cross-reference that to what if I succeed? You know what I'm saying? Because I failed at a lot of stuff up to that point. So it's like, I already know failure. Like, I already know what that feels. I already know what it feels like to foreclose on a house, to, to you know, get a car repossessed, to, I already know what all that, what failure feels like. Mm -hmm. So I need to know what success feels like. So let yeah. me just, let me chase that. Let me press into that. So none of these things that I've done or, do, or are currently doing, even like coding, coding plugins, bro, I promise you, I like every inflection of that. I don't know. Like, it's all the same story. I can fold this same story over into every love aspect of what I'm doing. Like when we did Peculiar Sounds, we did Peculiar Sounds. Doobie came to me. Doobie wanted to do drum loops. Mm -hmm. That's all he wanted to do because I did loop elements. And he saw that and he thought that was really dope. And he was like, hey, man, you know, I want to do those drum loops and he, mm -hmm. then he got me out with doing a drum pack that's what he wanted to do a drum pack yeah and i was like it's bigger yeah dude like they don't really just want your drums what cats right. really want they want your sounds 
He's like, you think they they know my sound? I was like, yeah. And I was like, we should we should do a plug in. And he was just like, a plug in. I was like, yeah. Like, I'm this fear. Like, like whatever. Like, we should just do our own plug in. Uh huh. He's like, you could do that. <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> I didn't tell him. No, I didn't. I couldn't uh, do that. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I can do that. It's easy. All right, let's do it. I got a flight out to Connecticut like a couple of weeks later, and we sat in this studio. I, I mean, bro, and I had sampled some stuff. I had yeah. sampled stuff before. Like I, I had some experience with sampling over the years. Mm -hmm. Not at that level. But I kind of had an in and around idea of what to do. So I just started sampling sounds. And I literally, we sat there for two or three days and I figured it out. I was, a lot of times I'd, I'd sample something and I'd play, you know, play it back, the sound. And I'd be like, and he, and I'd be like, mm, something didn't do right with that. I'm going to do that again. Yeah, yeah, try it again. Okay. And then I'd change some settings and do whatever and then hit the button again and then we wait five ten minutes 20 minutes 30 however long it took to do that one sound and i'd be like okay let's check it now and i'd be like oh, it's almost there i think it's something else that i need to tweak maybe like a little bit more mids or something let me try this and i tweak and i just i was exp i was literally learning on the go and figuring it out as i was going yeah. and then each sound got easier and easier and easier and then you know those last like 10 to 15 sounds just went like that because i had kind of gotten the rhythm and figured it out but then even figuring out the sounds i still had to like come back come and figure out okay how do we make this into a plug in how do we how do we cut what okay coding uh let's 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 figure it out and just jumped in there and just started started figuring it out and that, I mean, those first the first versions of, of Peculiar Sounds had so many issues, so many mm. problems, so many issues. And even, I mean, even this different things that I'm still still figuring out, still fixing. I'm still fixing bugs and stuff every yeah. other iteration of it. But each plugin that I do, I learn something new. Each yeah. piece of software, each thing that I'm doing, I'm learning something new. You know, and I've just, I don't know. That's just, that's just been my framework. I just don't know how to just hit the wall on stuff and just stop, yeah. like give up. I just, I there's just that. something in me that just keeps pressing me to like figure it out. You know what I'm saying? To keep going until I figure it out. When, so when did you know that like, dang, I'm an entrepreneur. Like God has given me this gift to be an entrepreneur and I'm not just a, piano teacher i'm not just a. I, I can't just have a regular job like i have to get out here and yeah. essentially run a business uh it, it wasn't as transparent as that i would say i wish i could say it was a it was um it was that linear i say it just felt more normative to just follow that it just felt like that was just the way to go. I don't really? know, like, uh, I mean, I always wanted to do music. I knew mm -hmm. that. That was never a question in my mind, like, what am I gonna be doing? What do I really want my life to be? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, now that that shifted, you know, from being a little child up to, you know, becoming a, finally becoming an adult. Like, yeah. you know, maybe I wanna be the guy that tours, that plays for this artist or does this or gigs or, Maybe I'm running a studio. Maybe I'm, you know, um, selling equipment. Maybe I'm doing. And the funny thing is, I end up doing all of these things. But yeah. um, at some point in my life, but it was just always like this this inherent kind of drive to to just do that. But I think when it became transparent to me was or or the chase started. I'd say was I was uh, working. I was right out of high school. And I was working at this factory because yeah. my dad had a rule. He was like, all right, you either going to go to school, you're going to get a job mm -hmm. if you're going to stay here. Th those are the rules. That that's it. If you're not in school, you need to have a job. And it'd be preferable if you had both. Yeah. And so um, I got this job at this factory and I was, um, 
I was, um, you know, working. We were just putting, you know, standard factory job, putting together widgets and yeah. doing, you know, eight to ten hours a day, just wow. just doing whatever, you know, just. And I remember getting those first checks and getting those checks and stuff that would come in. I'd be like, man, you know, that was, you know, okay, three hundred bucks, three hundred fifty bucks. Okay, cool. You know, four hundred dollar check. Oh man, you know, we worked eighty hours this week. I brought home eight hundred dollars. You know, wow, Lord. like that was. You know, I just really thought I was doing something. But at some point, something clicked. And I was just like, I, because I hated getting up at like four o'clock in the morning to, you know, get myself together, to be at work at five, to work to four the next, you know, the, the afternoon. Yeah. The whole day is gone. Then I got rehearsal, got to rush and get out of there and go straight to rehearsal, you know, shower, go to rehearsal, do, get, get up, do the whole thing the next day, you know. And it's just the rat race. And then they just had so much control of my time. That, and I Literally. really wanted to be doing something else. There and is. um, and I remember just sitting on the line one day, just doing the little widget stuff, doing the little factory stuff, or whatever. And I was just like, yo, okay. Baseline, I'm making about three to $400 a week. You know, mm -hmm. take home, pay out the taxes in FICA, whoever that is, <laughs> you know. Uh, and okay, what can I do to make four hundred dollars a week and not have to get up at four o'clock in the morning? And I just began to like ponder on those things for like mm -hmm. the the longest. And and then one day it kind of came to me because I had a friend that had asked me what I teach him how to play piano, and I was yeah, like, and I was like nineteen at that time, and I still I didn't again the same aspect of the story never done anything like that i don't know what i'm doing i don't know if i can teach anybody but he said like yo man i'll pay you to teach teach me how to play i was like really i was like mm. i don't even know what to charge like he's like what would you charge me i was like mm, i think i was making 10 bucks an hour at the, the job yeah. i was that's like yeah ten dollars man just give me ten dollars a lesson i guess i'll give you an hour of my time because i figured that's what my time is worth it's yeah. worth ten dollars an hour okay you know we talk and then here we go now we're talking about circa 2001 oh so wow the time gas the, yeah gas was 89 was like a dollar 19 at that point the inflation money a you know, little different money was a whole lot of the whole whole different ten dollars at that time was like you know the equivalent of at least you know fifty an hour at, at, at this in this current economy, um, but at that point ten bucks just was a, to a nineteen year old ten dollars a lesson just you know I'm like oh that's yo that's half a gas tank bro like yeah. inflation <laughs> like, calculator say ten dollars in two thousand one is about seventeen dollars and forty one cent. Well, there you go. There you today, go. So. Those are facts. So I, I was at 10 bucks and a lesson. So I, I just kind of did started teaching him on the side, 10 bucks a lesson. I'm like, it's cool. He hits me with a $10 bill. I ain't really doing much, but, you know, walking him through scales and just yeah. doing what I remember from my piano lessons. I just started thinking back to that stuff and just, I'll just do that, you know, yep. I guess. Maybe he'll figure it out. I don't know. Um, and so, again, tying that in with the, you know, the the job and all of that stuff. I just started like working that and I started thinking like, man, okay, if I got another student, it's twenty dollars a week. There it is. Putting it together. Like, wait a minute. Putting it together. So I'm like, four hundred dollars a week. If I got what forty people giving me ten dollars, you know, a week. Yeah. That's four hundred bucks. I'm like, oh, then I was then then it finally then the entrepreneur thing finally kicked in. I didn't know it was entrepreneur, but it just kicked in. I was like, you know what? Forty bucks. I mean, not forty bucks. Ten bucks is really low. Like, yeah, what if go. I charge twenty? At least twenty. I think twenty. I know that's yeah. a stretch, but twenty. That really gets me up in the morning. So if I did, what if I did? I'm just gonna see if I can get somebody to just just bite on it. So the next person to ask me, I'm gonna tell them twenty. Mm -hmm. Like. I'll keep the other guy at 10, but the next person that asked me to teach less, I'm going to do 20. I'm going to tell them 20 an hour. Yeah. And so uh, they bid on it. And so I was like, okay, so 20, that's, that 
kills the metric down. I don't need that means to make 400 bucks. I don't need 40 people. I actually only need 20 people. Yeah. So if 20 people give me $20, that's $400 a week and I could quit wow. this job. And so that started the hunger. Like I literally started. And back then, this is again, the Internet was still we didn't even really have pictures on the internet yeah. hardly then. like you couldn't do video you could there was no social media mm-hmm. maybe black planet i don't even think myspace was popping in <laughs> like it was like it was it was the internet was just a search engine at that point yeah. for the most part. like the online encyclopedia you check your mm-hmm. email you do random stuff it yep. wasn't like <laughs> nowhere near not even like a thought of what it is now mm-hmm. and so I had to do guerrilla marketing. I had to get like flyers printed up. I know people don't even know what a printer is probably nowadays, but printed up <laughs> flyers. Um, just said, I teach piano lessons, you know, call this number or whatever. And I'd go around the barber shops and beauty shops and because I figured, oh, there's, there's, especially like the, the beauty shops. I go into the, the beauty shops. I put on like a nice polo like this and yeah. walk in and you know start handing it out Door to all door. the yeah start handing out to all the ladies and say hey you know i teach piano because i'm thinking like maybe they have kids and maybe they you know they got little kids and maybe they want to learn and and i'd yep. walk out of there with maybe like you know two or three people that was like yo i'll call you you know i'll call you monday or whatever and so i just kept grinding it out so i was building the frameworks for all of that stuff then yep. marketing stuff out there yeah and just learning just learning it as i go and then eventually it took about a year and i eventually got got enough students i got about 50 i think when i got to like the 14 15 student mark i quit i was just like yeah i'm just not doing this this anymore <laughs> uh and, and went full tipping and then eventually that business at the height of that business it took several years to get there um yeah. but at the height of that business uh because we eventually went to where we was charging like you know, because I learned so much in that business. I was charging a hundred dollars a month by this point at the height of the business. We just would mm. scale it out. We do contracts, six months, you know, whatever. Yeah, there and you go. You would, yeah, I learned because I learned I, I had to figure out how to keep my money consistent. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, if you're gonna be a student, I'm gonna take you in. It's gonna be a six month commitment because you can't learn anything and you can't really learn anything in less than six months, you know, yeah. with, with any instrument, you gotta be at least willing to commit to six months and it's a hundred dollars a month. So I knew each student was worth at least $600. If I got a person in, I'm gonna get at least $600 out of you before you leave. I was yeah. learning like long-term value and customer, Dang. but I was learning all of those you, things. You learned the subscription model before it became a big thing. Yeah. Cause that's this was like, 2007, you know, 2008. That's like the 2023 slash 2024 model of you're no longer going to buy something one time. You're going to be yeah. <laughs> a Recurring. subscriber forever, you know? But 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 the pain points taught me that because I couldn't keep people consistent. Like when yeah. I was doing lessons, like people would come in and I would be like, yo, like, you know, I'd have one week where 30 people would show up mm-hmm. and, and they were paying about a week, you know, and then, I, then the next week, 10 people would show up. So the yeah. money would just do this, it's hard just to live doing that. that. But the bills was doing this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we ain't bills going was nowhere. We staying the same. same. Yeah, yeah. It, I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't keep up. So I had to figure out ways to 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 keep that money tight. And so the height of that business, it's like 2008, right before the crash of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, we had 120 students. Wow, and you, only you and someone else, or I had a I had like four teachers that were teaching with me. I had a guy that was doing bass. I had a guy that was doing guitar. Uh, uh, guy that was teaching drums, and I had a lady that was doing vocal lessons. And we oh. had built out a full on. To, we was doing recitals once a quarter. Like we was doing, we was doing the whole shebang, man. Like just building it out. And like I said, we was hundred dollars a head x one hundred and twenty. Uh, and we were, yeah, we was doing really, really good. You're talking in 2008 money at that point now. You got to get adjusting for inflation. Dang. Like I just, I see, I guess I see the big picture when you say you, you bring it in other people. Cause you're like, Oh, I got a vision now. Like we can actually yeah. build something here. So I, I, yeah. I see that entrepreneurship. Like that makes perfect sense with gospel producers and all your other ventures yeah. and stuff like that. It's like that mindset was always there, you know? Yeah, you you cultivate it along the way. Uh, it, it just it's that's the beautiful part of just doing like jumping in and doing. Yeah, 
is because you you figure these things out. Like the, these things that I were learning were concept were legit business concepts. Mm -hmm. But at the time, I was not cognizant. I wasn't sitting back, you know, with my pen and pad, you know, just you know, this is this and this is that, and I got to calculate this. No, I'm yeah. just trying to figure it out. Like I got bills i got kids i got food like that needs to be on the tape like mm. i don't have time to figure out what this business hack is i just need yeah. to do it youtube like, ain't around I, it ain't you can't it wasn't yeah youtube was a thing. speaker and tell you no. a strategy or blueprint you know we have none of that bro like i just had to figure it out like it's like there's nobody there's no coaches there's no gary v there's no get yeah. uh, uh what's that guy name uh, uh grant cordon it's none of these cats uh -huh. is around at that point you know like giving all of this 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 game on how to you know build a, a business and stuff it's yeah. like no i gotta figure it out but like i said i cultivated and figured out collaboration in that space because those were skills that I had to pick up and I had to learn along the way that ended up becoming valuable in this season. And that season, it was, I gotta keep the lights on. And yeah. this season of my life, now that I've matured in that and that's no longer the thing, now it's strategy. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like what was once like figuring it out now is a legit strategy. Now mm -hmm. I know how to collaborate with others. I built my entire, all of my businesses have been built on collaboration. Gospel Multi Tracks was built on collaboration. It wasn't just me doing tracks. I went and found producers from everywhere and brought yep. them into this one platform and gave them percentages of tracks. And I made money off of the percentages of their tracks that they sold. And we collaborated <laughs> together Genius. and built that thing out. And then I did creating stems. I folded it over. I took the same mentality of I can't do this all by myself. I gotta figure it out. Got got a bunch of producers that know how that are good or apt to teach. Who in this community that I built up to this point are apt, as apt to teach as I am? And then I brought them in and said, "Teach a class," and they mm -hmm. taught a class. You know, and I led by example because I taught stuff before them, and so they got to sit in on what I was doing. And they's like, "Oh, so I see how John doing a bet. Let me get OBS. Let me get the cam. Let me get uh -huh. go to Walmart. Get me a little webcam. Get my little screen sharing thing going on." And and boom, we just going we gonna we gonna do these classes. And then the same thing yeah. turned over with Yash and then Aaron and then collaborating with Jamel and collab collaborating Snowball. with Doobie. And it just snowballs into this whole process of collaboration and building it out. And most people don't have the the literal guts to do that. They think that yes. they have to be the one man band, they think that they have to be the solo, you know, mm -hmm. preneur and figure it out because they think there's more money in doing it themselves. They think yeah. there's more money in if I just keep it all to myself. And I figured it out a long time ago that if you can just take the opportunity to, to collaborate with somebody else, to open up the door and build with somebody else. I had a friend mm -hmm. that told me a long time ago, he said, why would I eat hamburgers by myself yep. when we can eat steak together? Come on. And so when you when you get into that mentality and you figure that out, that you're better when you when you lock in with somebody else, you know, what I'm saying it, it just opens up. It's just where I am. I, I don't know anything else. So the next thing I do is going to be collaboratory. And the next thing I do is probably going to be some level of collaboration or some yeah. level of that that's built in. Like, I don't have any other framework to to build upon. You know what I mean? That's yeah. just that's where I'm at. That's funny. That's. Hey, that's amazing. Like everything you're saying, I'm just absorbing it in. I see the full circle moment in the big picture of every, even everything you're doing right now. Funny story. Do you remember this? I think it was maybe 2015 or 2016. You reached out to me on Facebook and you was like, hey, I'm doing this thing. I think it was gospel multi-tracks. And you was like, it hey, we're getting was. together producers and stuff like yep. that and putting out tracks. And I don't remember what I said. I probably was like, yeah, I'm down. But yeah. I remember at the time, I just was like, what is this? Like, yeah. what is this about, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, he I heard you say you was just reaching out to producers, like just shooting your yeah. shot. Like, this is what yeah. we're doing. This is what we got going on. And at the yeah. time, I, I wouldn't even really consider myself a producer then. I just probably was just posting stuff here online. Yeah. And, you know, it probably sounded good, halfway yeah. decent, you know? Because that's probably what made me reach out to you because I, 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 I figured out. I figured out it's, it's, it's so many layers. There's another layer I can give you. Um, I, when I first started Gospel Multi Tracks, I started, I thought big, 
I thought, let me reach out to some of the big, I'm not going to name names because I've no, actually I know. got a relationship for some of these people now, which yeah. is funny. But at the time, <laughs> I already, look, I already know. I already know. <laughs> but I would reach out to uh, like some of the the names. Biggest. And I would be like, yo, this is what I'm doing. Da, 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 da. I would really love for you to, to, to be a part of this platform that we're scaling and we're building. Da, 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 da. And I mean, they would either not respond, they wouldn't, and I get it. They didn't know who I was. And then they didn't know what this was. And they probably had the exact same reaction that you had. Like, what is this? Who yeah. is this dude? I don't know this dude. Yeah. He's got two first names. Who is this guy? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. My mama told me to watch out for people that got two first names. <laughs> the people that got two first names and baby teeth, watch them. Watch them out. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> So he just be like, yo, like, so they didn't know who I was. I didn't probably even really know who I was at that <laughs> time. But I just knew, like, let me try. These are the who's who. So let me reach out to the who's yeah. who and see if they're willing to to collaborate and help us bring some attention to this up and coming mm -hmm. platform and build. Then, of course, like those shots just 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 shot. They didn't do anything. Nobody, yeah. nobody bit. But then something clicked. I don't know. Something always clicks at, at a point. But what clicked in this point was I, I'm I, and I can't say I can't pinpoint a moment of the what exactly it was, but I'm pretty sure the framework was this. I was on social one day, I'm sure. And I probably saw somebody like yourself yeah. that was just either, you know, just playing something, creating a track, doing something for and I'm like, yo, that's killing. Yeah. Like they is. actually sound better than so and so, the guy that I was trying to like they, but who is this guy? And I dig into their profile, and it's like they got 150 followers. Like nobody knows who this guy is, but he's just killing it on Facebook. Yeah, like, uh, he this guy goes live once a week and just does his stems for church on Sunday, and he sounds good. I was like, let me reach out to these cats. I'm just gonna start. So I began a hunt. Then, then it became an obsession of. Let me find the underdogs. And you start Let getting a bunch of yeses, right? Yeah, it was like, exactly. Yes. Because yes. these because these were people that didn't, they were looking for opportunity. And here it is. This is the day before. I don't think people, like if you know, you know, but I don't think people realize social media wasn't what it is today. Like the algorithm was completely oh, random. Yeah, it was yes. just. And it, and it was different. Like, I feel like the underdogs these days, you we kind of pretty much, you either heard just about of everyone, not everyone, oh, yeah. but you yeah, get what yeah, I'm yeah. saying. Like, you, you could randomly come across someone in Tennessee yeah. or Texas and be like, dang, no one knows who this person is. Yeah, it's you know easy to find. Discovery, that's the word you're looking for. Discovery yeah. was almost like impossible. You had to know who somebody was. You had to like actively search for them and so i did yep. the hunt like i would get on the hunt and instagram was just starting to pop then around 2014 2015 15 so second yeah I was, videos 15 seconds videos so people have it's like i was a and r and at this point so Come it's on. like i get 15 <laughs> seconds to check out what you're doing and then i reach out and say hey i was watching what you were doing i saw this <laughs> video it was really really cool uh, we're building this platform called Gospel Multitracks where we create tracks for churches that don't have musicians and we do stems. And I see that you're a musician and da 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 And I send them a copy of uh -huh. this video, the video that I was watching. And I'm like, yeah, I saw this video and I think it's really, really dope. And then I send them, it was a pitch. Yeah. You know, you, I had and, a whole pitch. And the crazy thing is you're doing all this, but like looking back on it, you don't know that you're necessarily A&R, you're pitching and no. you're building a brand. You're just doing what makes sense I'm just in trying that to keep the lights on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep the lights on at that point. Because uh, this, remember I told you for, uh, earlier, I mentioned foreclosure on a house and I mentioned uh, uh, all of those things. Like I had a house full of babies. I foreclosed on my crib we were that close to being homeless. I mean, like literally like I'm talking like they had basically given us the notice to be out the house. Mm. And I had like three days to like find a place to live. And God came through literally on, on the third day. Uh, he literally, he literally came through uh, uh, on the third day for us. Cause my credit was shot. I couldn't get in. Mm. I couldn't find any place that would, that would, you know, take an application from us nonetheless. And we found this little old lady that was renting the house, uh, Miss Mary, and we and she came through and she took a bet on us 
and and this still didn't know what we was going through at that i'm pretty sure she she knew she she had a sense of what was going on the urgency that was in my my spirit to find a place to live but because it wasn't i mean i had to i had some money that i'd set aside and i knew that it wouldn't that i had enough to move but it wasn't enough to pay my foreclosed mortgage you know it wasn't enough to keep up with that but it was enough to at least get us somewhere you know get us somewhere Mm -hmm. and so um yeah i went through i was going through all of that you know uh i told i told a friend we you know a friend was telling me um a few months ago we was having a, a candid conversation and he was like bro he was like Man, I met you at, he said, you don't even, he gave me a, a little situation like you just said, man, I bet you yeah. don't even remember, man. I met you at NAM in 2016, bro. And he said, I came to you at your booth and I was like, yo, you know, what's up? Da, da, da. We shook hands and I think, you know, you you said text me and I text you and, you know, then we just kind of connected then, but we didn't really follow up like that. And then years later, here we mm-hmm. are, like we we rocking. Yeah. So crazy to me that, you know, that's where we we linked up. That's the point that I can point back to it now. Yep. And I was like, what year? And he was like, that was 2016. I was like, bro. I was like, so when I met you, when you met me at NAM that year, uh, 2016, I was like, yeah, bro. I was like, when I shook your hand, I had a food stamp card in my back pocket. Mm. Like I was, he was like, for real? I was like, bro food stamp pot like i had an ebt card in my wallet yeah and when i left uh nam that day i was driving around looking for a place that took ebt so i could get me something mm. to eat <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> because i literally put because i mean you're building business at that point so like yeah your money is is tied into your business you're trying you're doing as much as you can to live but the 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 boatload of your money is really mm. going back into you know, trying to build and scale the business because like yeah. if I can get the NAM and I can get in front of people yep. and I can get my business and my product in front of people, that turns into more sales, it turns into more income yeah. that hopefully yeah. brings us out of this whole thing. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's one of those things, man. Like it, it at that point I'm just doing things. I'm trying I'm I'm pushing and I like again I I just I, I told somebody the other day, I said I'm not in I'm not I'm not I'm not smart i'm just persistent you know (laughs) like i'm just persistent i graduated high school with a 1.8 gpa bro like i am not i am not (laughs) (laughs) see shout out to the 1.8s in the chat you know know like i'm just like i I did not do well in school and so um um i had to figure it out i had to be persistent enough to not take the no because no meant that my kids don't eat you know what I'm saying? Oh, it, it's that's different. what no means. It it's hits different, different when you like, need it. Yeah, it's different. And so that's the driving. And it's still the driving force of what I do. It's just a different level. Yeah, we've attained some levels of financial freedom and some levels of financial success because yeah. of staying consistent with what we're doing in business and scaling and keeping like mm-hmm. being persistent and keeping and knocking, knocking at the on. door yep. until it starts to work. Um, but you know at the same time like i said it's it's just it's it's main it's 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 just that it's the same drive it's the same driving force mm-hmm. like i now i'm trying to work to get these kids through college yeah. i'm trying to work to get them through you know all of these 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 things we got coming up in the future and still keep i'm still trying to keep the lights on that's at the end of the day yeah. i'm still just trying to keep the lights on and i keep that mentality no matter what's in the bank it's still the same it's still the same grind like every product everything is the same function it's like i gotta keep the lights on i gotta keep food because i'm the only i am i'm the only one in the house that that works you know what i'm saying like i'm that my wife is stay-at-home mom she homeschools our kids Mm -hmm. so you know i'm the one that has to get up every morning and and go make it happen I you know love that. So wrapping up here, um, I know that gospel producers, I'm sure you guys probably have enough products to release for the next two years that you're working <laughs> on. I won't give away what you're working on, but yeah. what does as an entrepreneur, since we're talking about entrepreneurship and business and all of that good stuff, what does a typical day look like for you or how do you plan your weeks uh, rather? Answer two of those questions because I want I want to hear both. Okay. How do you what does your typical typical day look like and how do you plan your weeks like how much freedom do you have to 
sit back and relax and how much of it is actually working <laughs> that's a good question i know those are some really good questions uh, first first question okay typical day a typical i don't have typical days what I did your day I look this... like today ah <sighs> today was i get up now i say the most consistent thing is i'm up early um mm. the most consistent we thing is five I... six about six. I'm up okay. about six. I crack. I'm. I am the f- every night. It without fail. I am the first one up and the last one to sleep every night. Yeah. The the first one up is the reason I'm the first one up is because I have to work. It's provider mode. The last one to sleep is protector mode as a husband. Mm, you yeah. Know? Uh. So I I just I'm just up until everybody sleep because I want to make sure everybody's good before I lay my head down. Yeah, that's just a that's just a provider protector type mentality, yeah. Um, but yeah, got up six. You know, I kind of check emails. I do all of the kind of early morning administrative stuff. You know, following up, replying. Um, I'm working with a, a, a client over in the UK mm-hmm. um, uh, on a project. And so they're t- like what seven hours ahead, six seven hours ahead. So I have to get up, and because when I get up at six, there it's like noon, one o'clock there. Yeah. So um, you know, I had to tap in with him on some things, and we was really closing out really this project that we had been working on. So I did that, um, and then from there, it's coding, it's um. Uh, talk following up with the people in on the uh, on our team is really like the first really one some of the first things that i do i go in i check on with um our social we have a social media manager now that just started uh, a couple of months ago so i'm following up with them what's on the schedule what are we really i'm looking at captions i'm looking at posts i'm looking at hat i'm looking at this let's change this let's tweak this what do mm-hmm. we got for that? Uh, I follow up with my guy that's doing video editing and we're looking at, you know, different edits that he's done and like telling them what we're doing with that. Yeah. And then I'm following up with my customer support guy. Uh, and it's 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 like, OK, what's going on over here? What are our customers, C-U-S-S, customers doing uh, today? What are, what are the ones you're dealing with that? How are we getting through that? We parse through those. And then from there, it's it's testing, it's profiling software, different things that we're working on. Uh, so I spent a lot of that time today. Uh, but it some of that stuff is typical. It's, it's some of that yeah. stuff is repetitive. It's just it just happens. It's not all the time the same time. The only consistent thing is probably what time I get up and probably checking yeah. my email first thing in the morning. Everything else in the day is a state of flux. Yeah, it's just is there whatever. Days, kind of, is there ever days where you're like, all right, today is a day I can kind of like sit back in. I'm tired. I'm a chill. It's like that's that's probably like the hardest thing for me. I mm. I, I it is so hard for me to turn off a lot of times. Uh, but I have pockets in the day. Mm. I'd say more so than days where I do that. Gotcha. There are days. I do have days every now and then where I'm just like worn out completely, yeah. like depleted. And I'm just like, I'm just not doing nothing. I don't care. Just not doing nothing. I'm going to sit here and just watch YouTube all day. I'm going to watch <laughs> Kale video. I'm going to catch up on all <laughs> Kale videos today. That's funny. Because um, <laughs> he's, he's dropped eight of them since the last time I was on YouTube. <laughs> Uh, so, um, I, uh, but I, most of the time I, I chill, I just have like moments where of the day mm-hmm. where I might, it's spaces of like two or three hours where I might just not be doing much of anything. I'll yeah. go for a walk for like an hour, you, you know, go. I'll do things like that. Um, but I'm working on that, that space of what they call balance, Yeah, which I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm, I I, yeah. I just don't know. I, I feel I honestly feel the most balanced when mm-hmm. I'm working. Gotcha. Um, that's just it's 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 a difficult space to 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 navigate yeah. sometimes. And I know some people probably say that probably sounds unhealthy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's it, not. It does a little I bit, mean, a little bit, you know, a little bit. It probably sounds unhealthy, but I but I don't. I'm I I I value family time too. So here's yeah. that's the other aspect of it, like. I value weekends as much as I can. I try to keep like like Friday nights 
One of my, my me and our wife, our non-negotiables are Friday nights or date night. Mm, there you, you go. Know, that's a non-negotiable. Like I have to be done by 6 p.m. on a Friday mm-hmm. so that we can go connect. And it yeah. it's it's a movie or it's out to eat. Or even if we don't leave the house, we lock the door and we just sit in our room and we watch our own. Yeah, we do intentional. So I have those moments. I have like nego- non-negotiables. Weekends, you know, I'm typically... That's the day where daddy is the guy that's driving everybody because mama's been driving everybody around all week. Yeah. So daddy is the day is that's daddy's day where he's going to like pick up the slack. Mm-hmm. You know, he's going to go get breakfast. He's going to go do this. He's going to do those type things or whatever. Uh, Sundays are church, you know, Sundays are, are, yeah. are those things like that. Uh, but, you know, I typically once everybody kind of chills on Sunday and then I kind of got into their lull is when I kind of lull down here sometimes on a Sunday evening and just yeah. kind of start to, and it, yeah. and it depends, it really depends on, again, it depends on what I'm, what I, what mode I'm in. These, these things cycle. So like, even like but when we, we, we work, we work hard. When we play, we play hard. Like for the holidays, for Christmas, we took a two week vacation into the Bahamas. Oh wow, that's you know amazing. We were, we were gone for like two weeks. I unplugged. I turned off like I have a thing where I turned off my phone. I did everything. I deleted all the apps off my phone. I did everything. It's just yeah. like straight nothing. You know I'm what I mean? Sure, that's and, hard. I'm sure, that's difficult. Oh, it's very hard. It's very hard. But that's why you hire a team. Yeah, you hire a team you to handle those things so that I know and there and and I know that I can walk away. There and customer support, customers are still going to get support. Yeah. Products are still going to be sold. Um, videos are still going to get edited. Social media posts are still going to be I'm made. sure you're like, dang, if you're anything like me, it's like, dang, what, what was the sales today? I'm sure that's hard. Like, what we've been doing? Oh, past now, I don't turn it off. No, okay, no, okay. I still get the PayPal notification. <laughs> gotcha, no, okay. PayPal notification. I did not delete that those apps off my phone. The other, the, yeah. the Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff was gone. Like YouTube, all that stuff was gone. And I'm able to lock in with the family and do gotcha, those okay. and do those things and really be there and be present. Like, mm. you know what I mean? Be in the moment with them and build those memories. Yeah. And so I do those sort of things, but when I work, when I'm in work mode, I'm in work mode. Like yeah. it's, it is, it is 12 to 16 hour days. Wow. Uh, it's, it's just that I just, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't, again, maybe, maybe this is, this is my, this podcast is my therapy session, but I don't yeah. know. I just don't, I, I, I find it very difficult to just be that normal it's like yeah no i have i, have I don't like know that. I ha- like, it's I have- just hard bro like i i get no value people now some people do they get value out of just like oh Sitting. man i'm tired it's the weekend bro i'm just yeah. yo i'm about to just yo give me the give me the controller bro like i'm about to 12 like, hours. i don't own an xbox yeah. i don't own a playstation <laughs> so when i say i don't play no games i don't play no games bro like i literally <laughs> don't play no games so I'm, I don't know. I don't get much value a lot of times out of just sitting on the couch yeah. watching TV. Like my brain is always moving a hundred miles an hour. And I'm just like, yo, like I can code a plug in in the time yes. that it takes me to sit here and watch this show where they're just being ratchet. And yeah. I, I don't know. I just don't have, I don't have much bandwidth for that stuff. So I, but but again, I find spaces. I'm not I'm not. If I get worn out, if I get tired, I know how to like press the pause button and just yeah. be like, "Yo, it's time to relax." You know? And I and my health is important to me as well because I that's why I walk every day. I've yep. adopted a diet that is conducive to low calorie, low carb, so I don't, you know, I treat my body in a way that um, uh, that I can maintain my health in yeah. the midst of it and that's keep important. my energy output at the place. But now when I say 16 hour days, that's not me literally sitting here in front of yeah, the computer yeah. for 16 hours. Just, oh, just locked in just like, you know, no, it's just, it's just, it's just being engaged in, in, in my business dealings for move. that amount of time. And, and in there, like I said, I think I told you before we got on the pod, like my wife, I mean, the kids, they come down here. We sit, we talk, the wife came down earlier and she's, you know, processing a couple of things and so we sat for an hour and yeah. talked 
You know what I'm saying? That happened twice today, I think. She came down here for a couple of times, for a couple, you know, not, it wasn't the second time, it wasn't an hour, it was maybe like 30, 20, 30 minutes. But just processing things. And the kids do the same thing. They come down here yeah. and we we talk. And we, like my son's in the filmmaking. He came down here. We mm -hmm. talked about He bought a new camera. We sat and went through the camera and stuff. So, you know, I built my life in a way to where my family is there. They, we homeschool, so they're upstairs. They're always here. I'm always here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just a, it's just our life. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's weird, I know, to some people. But it's just what works for us. I mean, the studio look real comfy. Um, looks like a nice <laughs> place to just come back and just sit around and like, hey, what pops doing? You know? To, yeah, yeah, it is, and it's and it's hard to get out of here. It's it really is. Yeah. Like and, you know, and I and I find myself in there. And if I sit in the room long enough and get still, mm -hmm. I get on Amazon and start finding some little trinket or something, little little cable or something. You know, I need to order this. I need to order that. I need to get this thing. I need to get that thing. That's so, so funny. It's it's funny. Like I relate so much to some of the things that you say, just in terms of like being in that work mode and yeah. like I'd be struggling. Like you know, I do the nine to five thing. So oftentimes yeah. it's like the only time I get to really work on a product or work on an idea or even just music is after eight o'clock because yeah. six to eight is like family time. Me and my wife, yeah. we hanging out, we talking, and eight yeah. o'clock is like I can be dead tired, but like. You know, you know you how it is. Like once you get in the mode and the and yeah. the switch go off in your mind, next thing I know, it's twelve o'clock. I'm like, yeah, all right, I gotta. And you got to get up sleep. in a few hours. I yeah. know. And then yeah. it's like, all right, let me go on YouTube. I I want to uh, learn this thing, such and yeah. such about this. And then next thing yeah. you know, it's one o'clock in the morning. And it's like, all right, I got to get up. Like I I, yeah. I have to go to sleep. Like I have to get out of here. You know? Yeah, it's so it's, it's just what tough. it is. It's it's tough, and I I'm just I don't know. It's just it feels that's what feels normal but i know there's a means to an end there's a there's yeah. spaces where i'm I, there's a space that i'm building towards and so mm -hmm. when i'm in building and i'm in grind mode like there's just that but i have pretty there the light days are pretty light when i'm not doing products when i'm in between yeah. product releases when i'm in between when i'm working on the next thing when i'm trying to figure out what the next things are pretty light yeah, yeah you know and I've, and I've and i've but i've built my life in a way to where it's not I can put time in and work, but it's not like stressful work. You know, yeah. it's not like arduous, you know, work. Now, coding is intensive, you know, so I'll spend a few hours on, a few hours off. You know, it's like I got to get in and figure out this thing. And so it's a lot of research or it's a lot of reaching out to other developers, asking them questions, seeing what, the, you know, what what is this thing? How did you figure this out? How did you get over this? I have yeah. this problem. There's this thing that fell apart and I'm trying to figure that out. So you got to just get in there and you got to like grind it out. And so when you get um, so but when I come out of that mode, you know what I mean? Like I'm I'm just out like I'm just I'm just kind of, you know, parsing out what the next thing is like. And so it gives me time to 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 just kind of breathe. And then, like yeah. I said, if I need to take a two week vacation, a two week break or whatever, mm -hmm. I can do that. And then I have days where I might just be on the phone most of the day, just chopping it up with catching up with the homies. Like, yeah, what you doing? Yep. And I get off the phone, I call somebody else. Yo, what you doing? You know, and I get off the phone, call somebody <laughs> Yo, what y'all doing? And like, man, you, yeah, man, we just dropped a product last week, bro. I'm, I'm just chilling today. I'm just chilling. So, you know, yeah, uh, I can't remember what the second question was. Oh, no, I think you answered it just in terms of, you know, just looking at the workflow in your life as an entrepreneur, like, yeah, you answer it per perfectly. So, yeah, yeah, no. it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. I don't, I, t I don't have a nine to five. I have a when I open my eyes to when I close them. Yeah, that's, that's just what I have. And um, yeah, I, I don't know. I just I wish I could. I, I've tried to be normal. Yeah, I've tr my wife has tried to make me normal. She has tried to domesticate. <laughs> normal. She has. She has tried and she gave up years ago because she realized yeah. that I'm the most pleasant when I'm doing the thing that I feel like when I'm in the when I'm flowing, when I'm in the vein yes. of what I'm the flow you, state, the flow state. Yeah. And when you pull me out of that, I'm not a happy guy when you're trying to make me do this thing. Mm -hmm. you know or trying to mold me into another space i'm just not a pleasant person to be around but if you Move. get out of the way and just yeah. let me kind of flow and get this thing out that i'm building yeah. then it 
it it it allows for more space when I'm out of that. Then I'm I'm tapped in. I'm like, yo, what are we doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We dropped this product. We did did this. Da 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 da. These steaks. Yeah, what you want to eat tonight? You know, it's Friday. Cause yeah. those are non we we have the non we built around the non negotiables. Yeah. So she pretty well. That's why I told you. I think we was talking before the thing like that. My wife is the driving force, like behind. Yeah, yeah. Like she's my driving force. So it's like she knows that like there's a non negotiable. Like she's like, okay, hey, you know, he's working to midnight, three mm. or four days out of the week, but I know Friday is our day and we yep. are going to kick it. We're going to go do this. We're going to go hang out on the weekend. We're going to sit up. We're going to watch some Netflix movies. We're going to catch up on Married at First Sight. I think that's about the only show that we actually watch together. Yeah. <laughs> and she be watching everything else without me. So mm -hmm. I just like, you know what? I'll just, I, I can definitely watch maps with you. So we'll do that, catch up on a few things, laugh and joke and talk and do church on Sunday and then turn around and start it all over again. Yeah. No, you know. that, that is lit. Well, John Mike, everyone. I didn't mean to take up so much of y'all time, man. I didn't mean to. You're good. Like, I, I love, you know. Probably the longest questions. podcast you done ever had. No, nah, I think my longest one was two hours, but that one didn't get posted. That was my first oh, wow. one. That was my first one, and I didn't really know what I did was doing. I had, like, 15, 20 questions, and I was like, I got to get through all of these. But I'm, I'm yeah. learning, like, you, you just need to ask a couple of hard-hitting questions, yeah. and it'll the rest of the podcast to take care of yourself so you know yes sir absolutely well that is john mike thank you thank you for coming on the podcast and That's chopping pleasure, it up bro. for a few not a few hours but an hour or so appreciate that yeah. greatly let everyone know what you're working on next if you want to and where they can find you at well uh you can check out everything that i'm currently doing at gospelproducers.com uh that's pretty much my domain at this point um yeah just just catch us over there follow us on the socials you can find me on uh instagram uh, um facebook all of those places uh like instagram and TikTok. i'm i'm john mike yeah uh Ain't much over there because I hadn't really been doing much on the personal <laughs> side of things. I'm just been kind of I've actually been on a social media break for like the last like 60 days Oh wow. to kind of that's part of the process of getting stuff done is I got to like kind of lock out so I can lock in. Mm. Um, so you might not find much over there, um, but, you know, there's some things I got a YouTube channel, John Mike, as well. uh, a lot of really good stuff over there, a lot of reviews, a lot of um, videos and stuff over there i do but yeah. right now the current crack that i'm on is gospelproducers.com yes, so sir. just check out there once you hit the website you'll see everything that i'm working on and what i got going on there absolutely well thank you again we out that's all we got for today yes sir all right <laughs>